I'm the uh, chair of the related open source project track. I'm uh, very happy to have Cole Crawford here. It uh, feels very appropriate to start uh, the bottom of the stack with hardware first thing in the morning. And uh, I won't, I'll let him finish introducing himself. Good morning, guys. Can you hear me OK? Perfect, perfect. So my name is Cole Crawford. I'm with the Open Compute Foundation. And who in the room has heard of Open Compute? OK, perfect. That, that is fantastic. Um, aside from being related to the Open Compute Foundation, I'm also the Cloud Advisor for Linux Foundation. I've been involved with OpenStack since pretty much day one. Uh, previous, you know, previously, before there ever was OpenStack, there was a, a small company called NASA and a, and a small company called Ansel Labs. And I was Ansel Labs' federal partner. Uh, so we did a lot of government integration for, for Nova before there, was, before there was Nova and a combination of Open Science. So I've uh, been involved with OpenStack quite a long time. Um, so with that being said, um, you know, I'd like to kick off and, 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 and thank you, Lloyd, and thank you for the rest of you for being interested in hardware. We, we at Open Compute feel that, uh, that you know, open source software can only go so far in terms of completely open sourcing a data center. Um, you know, when we, uh, typically when I talk about cloud, I talk about sort of the abilities of cloud, right? And I like to talk about the three abilities of cloud, interoperability, portability, and compatibility. And workload compatibility, workload interoperability, you can get some of these things from software. You can make sure you're using standard APIs, standard interfaces, et cetera. Uh, but you know, uh, x86 has been around for quite a long time. And um, there's, there's tons of different standards, right? You've got uh, SM BIOS, you've got ICMI. There's you know, all sorts of different uh, mechanisms for interfacing with hardware. But you'll notice from vendor to vendor, the implementation might be just a little bit different. So Open Compute aims to standardize the interfaces and the APIs, if you will, that we, we uh, communicate with uh, at the hardware layer and get rid of what we call uh, gratuitous differentiation in the, in the hardware space. So who knows where these quotes are from? Anybody? So this goes back a long ways, right? This is uh, uh, Linus Torvalds and Richard Stallman. And, and you know, we like to sort of parody this message with Open Compute. And I think OpenStack has done something similar, right? Um, humans are innovative. We want to move forward. And you know, as humans migrated throughout history, we've always wanted to experience the, 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 you know, the, the, the creature comforts. And so you know, we always wanted to make the new world around us sort of like the old world around us. Uh, and that typically moves towards an, an open ecosystem, right? Um, can't say the same thing for power. Uh, I don't know if you guys travel internationally, but that, that's, that's tough. Um, but typically, we want to we wanna experience in a common way uh, our, our world around us. So um, you know, before there ever was standard x86 hardware, we had software innovation happening and, and openness being embraced um, you know, in the early 90s. And, and, and Richard Stallman, actually, with, uh, with the GNU project even before that. So let's take a quick look at, at you know, sort of this timeline here. Uh, you can see how you, know, you had these big, big companies with great ideas. Think about how innovation happened, right? It's a lot of times, uh, and look at the VC community today. A lot of times, you know, the, uh, 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 an idea gets spawned with an investment with uh, a big differentiator, right? And you see a lot of this stuff start out as very closed, but as as the as the technology becomes more democratized, more commoditized, you see this shift. And you know, you really saw Sun sort of embrace this. Um, uh, you know, Andy Andy Beckersheim is the uh, uh, vice chairman of the Open Compute Project and obviously the founder of Sun. And you, you saw Sun sort of make that move before anybody else. Obviously, Java was open source. Um, and even the operating system was given away uh, along, with, along with the hardware. And then ultimately, you see sort of this path to, to Linux. And um, I had BSD up there, but I thought for this conference, it was, it was sort of uh, not relevant. But you do have a lot more options on the, on the open space as it exists today. And by the way, stop me and, and raise your hand. You know, we find that 
as we've given this sort of open, uh, open source data center speech, uh, we like this to be conversational. A lot of people have a lot of questions around, around hardware and the, the relationship that, that hardware has with software. You know, typically you look at uh, the relationship between an IT, um, or IT software side of an enterprise and IT hardware, and they're completely segregated, different chains up, and we want to, very much like OpenStack is doing, right? We want to smash that paradigm and, and create an ecosystem where there's harmony that exists between both. So if you have questions during this uh, presentation, please raise your hand and let's, let's make this uh, uh, a conversation. So evolution of the cloud. Again, following in that same sort of vein, right? You start out very proprietary. Uh, VMware, you know, uh, the, the, the sort of the, I didn't actually have IBM up on the left. I, I guess if I was doing this slide again, I would put IBM out there in the 70s when they were doing virtualization. But you know, on x86 virtualization, uh, VMware is sort of the you know the, the father and founder of virtualization. Started out very proprietary. Then you saw Zen emerge, right? Zen was a game changer for x86. All of a sudden, people were doing you know a lot more infrastructure consolidation, right? You could you didn't have a great way to manage it, but you certainly had a lot more density. Um, and then you had KVM, right? Uh, the the Kubernetes acquisition, um, which was funny, you know, the, the, the KVM thing, actually uh, Kubernetes, the company behind KVM, originally spun that idea out for their desktop service, SolidEye. And the, the hypervisor was sort of a secondary technology to what they thought was their differentiating uh, value proposition, which was SolidEye and the Spice driver. Um, so we have this infrastructure consolidation but we had no great way to manage it, right? Who, who here, uh, raise your hand if you were responsible for any kind of IT operation in terms of process and server lifecycle management, software lifecycle management. So, uh, you know, uh, who, ha who has felt pain in, in, the, in the SDLC process for, uh, for software? I mean, it's, it's, it's rampant, right? It's rampant. Uh, so, we, you know, we saw open source emerge uh, around the time of Zen and KVM. You had companies like Puppet and Opscode sort of give us tools, right? And now you've got Ubuntu and RPath and all these other companies that are giving us tools that can help us you know, manage. You had enterprise tools. Uh, you know, I should have should have put um, Blade Logic on this slide. I should have put uh, Opsware on this slide because these were sort of the early tools, right? And w when, when we think of sort of managed services, uh, anybody remember LoudCloud? LoudCloud was sort of the first SaaS model, right? It was just, it started out as SaaS. Um, so we, we were finally given tools to help us manage our, our infrastructure. And then came the anomalies of the world and, uh, and the Reuben Cohen to go along with anomalies, um, who himself is a, an anomaly, um, and the eucalyptuses of the world, right? And um, these were the first sort of open source cloud technologies that we were given, uh, albeit both of them embraced sort of this open core model, right? Which we all know is, is probably not the best model if you wanna grow a big community and you wanna, you wanna see traction in the enterprise. Um, Anomaly eventually was, was sold, I think, to virtual, vir virtual screen, I think, and, and uh, Eucalyptus obviously still, still exists still a, a competitor in some sorts to, to OpenStack, but you know, in, terms of, in terms of community and driving innovation in an open way uh, with, again, the, sort of the three abilities that we talk about for cloud, we're finally at a place where you know, OpenStack is dominating the community traction and involvement from, a, from an ecosystem perspective. So do, does what I put on here have does it give away? Does anybody know why I put these pictures on here? That's exactly right. So the original 19-inch rack came from the railroad switching era. It's 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 unbelievable. It had no had no specification for depth or width, right? Or excuse me, uh, uh, yeah, depth or 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 height only width. Um, and this is what's in our data center. This is what's being run. This is what Google does. This is what IBM does. This is what HP does. This is what Dell does. This is this 19-inch width rack is exactly what everybody does in the industry now, with 
no thought to how efficient it is, which is pretty interesting. So the, it's kind of fuzzy, but this, this picture here up on the upper left, those are the original 19-inch racks. And we've just adopted that standard because it was there. So again, following sort of the, the history, right? In the 70s, you had the big mainframes. Um, you had sort of the scale-up technologies, right? You had the, the big super domes, and uh, you had the, the Starfire series from Sun. And then finally, in the 2000s, you know, x86 really took off in the data center. We really started figuring out how to do HA. Um, it wasn't necessarily all about fault tolerance anymore, right? We had enough workload. We had enough to process that it started making sense for us to scale out instead of scaling up. And, uh, you know, you, you, the Dells, the HPs, the IBMs of the world are in the positions they're in today because they recognize that. So, but like I said earlier, they recognize this, but they all sort of tweak their versions of, of IPMI or, or SFIOS or DMI, right? So there was all these just very small variations that made heterogeneous environments for us hard to cope with. Uh, who here today by standard practice will deploy an OpenStack cluster on more than one piece of, uh, you know, tier one tier? And, 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 and if I could, how's, how's that working? Okay, uh, you know, the, 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 the attitude of most C-level executives and enterprises is say, if I, want, if I want to ensure workload uptime, right, if I want to meet my OLA and my SLA, I'm going to have a, a homogenous environment. It's going to be all Dell, it's going to be all HP, all IBM, all whatever. Um, just, like, just like in the software world, right? Um, who here is doing an OpenStack puppet or otherwise implementation with a combination of say Ubuntu and Red Hat or Piston. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, secure, uh, secure Linux from scratch. Secure. Yeah. So who's doing a, a heterogeneous OpenStack software? Yeah, pro yeah that's, that's what I'd expect, right? So finally, um, we've, we've engaged the, the tier ones and we've engaged the tier, even some of the tier twos and the ODMs uh, over in China to see that uh, the 19-inch rack is an old way of doing things. We've got a, a new, more efficient standard, and we're, you know, just like OpenStack started, we have, uh, we have really gained a lot of momentum in the last 18 months around open compute uh, by the sheer number of people that raised their hand. Uh, obviously, there's a, there's, a, there's a big traction here that we want to have everybody in this room get involved with uh, from the pure perspective of, of community involvement for uh, operating our data centers. So who here has uh, signed up for a mailing list on Open Compute? Anybody? OK. Uh, if I could, what, which mailing list? OK. They're all there. What about you, sir? Great, great. So hardware management is um, is being there is actually motherboard. I, I, I meant to put that back on. So uh, Matt Gambardella from Nebula is now chairing the the motherboard um, vertical, and that's it's important. Right? It's very important. Um, so open compute exists of sort of five verticals, very much like OpenStack consists of, you know, the various top level projects that make up OpenStack. Um, we've got virtual I.O. where uh, everything networking related, everything that has anything to do with, you know, any kind of virtualized I.O. or real I.O., right? Because ultimately in a scale architecture, a lot of your real I.O. Uh, turns into virtual I.O. So we've got virtual I.O., we've got hardware management, which, um, uh, is run by, co-chaired co by uh, Matthew Litz and Grant Richard from Goldman Sachs. Uh, obviously, Goldman Sachs knows a thing or two about how to manage hardware. We've got data centers assigned, which uh, on my next slide, I'll show you sort of the benefits of, of why 21-inch racks and 
why they did data center design. We have the open rack, which, uh, which pretty much contains all of the, uh, all of the, what started out as the triple rack and now um, the individual racks that make up open compute. And then obviously storage, uh, which I currently chair storage. So if you're interested in storage, please, actually if you're interested in any of this, come up and talk to me. But if you're interested in storage, I'd especially like to talk to you about open compute. Uh, and storage makes up you know, all of our cold storage, all of our near life storage, all of our production storage. Uh, this, is, this is the vertical where um, you know, obviously a lot, of the, a lot of the companies you see in the middle um, are, are focusing. Um, th th the two really interesting technologies for me personally in open compute uh, right now are around virtual I.O. and storage. Um, only because I'm, I'm closer to those worlds. Not, I'm uh, not saying anything about the other, the other verticals, just uh, in terms of, say, OpenStack, right? Storage makes up, uh, you know, we've got multiple companies here representing storage technologies, right? You've got DreamPost out there and Inkling. You've got Red Hat here with Gluster. You've got uh, SwiftStack, right? So there's tons, you know, BMP and NetApp um, are all storage focused. There's a ton of uh, traction in terms of storage around open compute. And, and one more thing on this slide is, you know, wh why open compute, right? I, I'd like to just sort of go over the history of, of why. Uh, does anybody remember the, uh, the hard drive shortage we had 18 months ago? This was a real problem for Facebook, right? This was a really big problem for Facebook. Uh, if you can imagine the global growth that Facebook had and continues to have, but put yourself back 18 months and, you know, in, in the U.S. and globally, Facebook was going uh, like crazy. And they were having a hard time sourcing enough uh, drives to, to meet the, the capacity demand for their, for their growth. So, uh, and they were buying from anybody, it didn't matter, but they were having a hard time, again, with the interoperability, compatibility, and portability of their workloads on all this hardware. So what they did was they engaged some of the, some of the, the big uh, ODMs in China, and they said, listen, we want to design a box. We want anybody to be able to build this box. We'll pay for support. We'll either lease it or buy it. Doesn't matter. But we want this box to be open source. We want anybody to be able to build it, and we'll buy it. We'll buy it from you. We'll source it, and we can then ensure that as we build out our data centers and as we build out our our uh, IT infrastructure, we can guarantee to some level that our workload's going to work with this hardware. So this is this really became a supply chain management issue. This wasn't you know uh, just like Rackspace initially was was figuring out how they were going to move off of sort of their, their, their VPS and into real cloud, this was done for Facebook to solve a huge supply chain management problem. The benefit was, you know, the community is going to benefit from this because this wasn't uh, a core sort of, uh, you know, IP thing for Facebook. This is something that ultimately for anybody doing scale out workloads was going to, it was going to be a good thing. So they made the obvious choice to open source it and, you know, we're all better for it. So back to uh, back to the 21 inches and and efficiency. Facebook did a lot of work around efficiency as they were doing their data center design, and they 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 ran a lot of numbers. They ran a lot of metrics. Um, they, you know, it started out as as a one and a half u um, uh, one and a half u unit because a one u fan was too small and a two u didn't offer as much density for a very, very nominal increase in cooling. So one and a half U ended up being the standard uh, initially for, for open compute, um, largely because of its efficiency. And you can see here that on the left, the Pineville data center that Facebook operates, operates and this is actually fairly old data. This, is, this says 1.08. Lately, we've been seeing closer to 1.02, 1.03. So that's a, it's a huge, you know, and, and one is sort of the magic number for PUE, right? Um, where Google's, you know, Google's best data center is operating at about a 1.3 standard production that they run. So we see by, by, by what we've done, you know, in terms of the 21 inch rack and by the efficiency of the data center design, the way, and who, who here has seen the video on how, how open compute and how the Pineville data center operates with the misters and evaporative cooling and, I'd, I'd encourage you to check out that video. It's really cool, the way that data center is run. And I think that if that data center is open, if you happen to be um, up there, I think you can actually 
go and steward that data. So it's quite impressive. So, so you know, roughly 15% more efficient than Google by doing sort of the analytics around efficiency. So here we are. We finally have production-ready open source software. We've got vanity-free open source hardware. Obviously, you know, the question is, what do you do next? And the right answer for us is, right, in terms of open compute, is a certification path. My, my screen is cut off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, up at the top, it would say the, the, the new standard open compute certification. And uh, we're already working with the community, and not just the open tech community, but, but the open tech community is certainly uh, what you'll see on the next slide. It's a very important community for us. But we feel that you know, it's, it's great to offer open source hardware, but what if we were able to uh, allow our software partners and the community adopters of software to benefit from a validated reference architecture? Um, I, 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 I contribute. Um, I, I go around and I often quote Chris Kemp from Nebula, who, who I believe at the last summit said, uh, you can have exadata without the need of dollar. Apologize to anybody from Oracle if you're here. But uh, uh, we feel that that's possible, right? We feel that you can do validated reference architectures and certified software stacks on open source hardware. And if we offer this, right, if we offer this certification path, we effectively, who here is, uh, represents a software company with a product? Anybody? Okay, so maybe 10% of the room. What if we were able to give you a hardware partner for free that could be adopted by the government, right? What if we could get Atomic Materia certified with this? Or, or what if we could get an SI to be a channel partner with this? Right, these are, these are key themes for what we want to do. So we're working very closely with Rackspace, right? The Open Compute Foundation is very closely working with Rackspace. Um, Rackspace, like Facebook, is faced with, uh, you know, with a, a growth challenge, and that's a good thing, right? But what if, what if you had turnkey integration and SI integration, right? What if you could certify your, your software on one piece of hardware, and you knew that it didn't matter if your customers deployed Dell or HP or IBM or DT or Supermicro or um, Boyd, I'm so sorry, um, Silicon Mechanics, right? It, what if it didn't matter? What if anybody could build it and your customers could put it in their data centers and know that down to the transistor, it's the exact same piece of hardware. You throw that into your data center, you don't even have to worry about the interoperability or the portability of a heterogeneous environment because it's completely supported from an SI where you, know, you can offer incentives for that SI to be your channel partner. Um, it, so this gives you know, a global footprint to base your, 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 your company around or your, you know, your IT ops uh, uh, organization on. So, yes? Right. Exactly. Absolutely. So, um, so last week, uh, some people were out in Raleigh, North Carolina. I think that's who you're, who you're referring to. Um, and out in Raleigh, um, one of the first sort of community-led initiatives inside of Open Compute, Open Compute was uh, this, this Roadrunner concept, right? You had Roadrunner and Community Happily, uh, which is the, the AMD and Intel spec uh, accordingly. And this is sort of the first time somebody that wasn't doing something specific to scale out growth for Facebook has designed something for the community and giving back to the community. Um, and this is exactly what we want, right? This is what we want out of the OpenStack community. We want everybody in this room to come work with us and build an ecosystem around open source software and open source hardware. Because you know, as we move towards 
software-defined data center, right? Having open interfaces and open standards to interface with. And if you listen to, to Steve Harrod from VMware sort of talk about his vision for the software-defined data center, I don't think you can get there in any mass, uh, you know, any any massively scalable way without doing this. I mean, I think you're going to need this open source aspect on the hardware side to do that. Um, and so on the certification path, we took a different path. Open Compute took sort of a different path. Our, our, our board is made up of uh, invites, right? We, we invited our board of directors to, to participate in this. Um, the, the foundation operates on a, on a healthy, you know, nonprofit budget, but every, every member of the board of directors was asked to be on that board of directors, and we don't, you know, there's, there's not, it's not the, the, the sort of the, the I mean, I, it comes with it a, a sort of bad term, but uh, the pay-to-play model, right? This is not a pay-to-play model for Open Compute. And, and there's a reason for this, though. It's not necessarily that, you know, that, that works. The Linux Foundation does it successfully. OpenStack is, is doing it successfully. But it's kind of a misnomer when you say open compute hardware, right? In order to truly do open compute hardware, if you want to do it yourself, you need to go to China and you need to spin up a multi-million dollar manufacturing company, right? Which we can't do. If it's open source software, I mean, if you're, if you're really you know, a masochist, you could do it on a tablet, right? I mean, you can do it on any piece of software, on, on any OS and you can write open source software. So, uh, you know, again, open source hardware, we kind of benefit from the fact that, you know, the relationships we have with the ODMs and the tier twos and the tier ones who are involved who see this train coming, no, no pun intended from the last couple of slides, um, but for the train that is coming, these guys see that the, you know, that, that we move towards open standards and we move towards open innovation um, where, you know, keeping things in the dark and keeping things proprietary don't make sense in the long term. They certainly make sense from, my, from a financial perspective in the, in the short term, in the near, you know, in the, when, a, when an idea is being brought, you know, to conception, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, there's a lot of bugs, there's a lot of things where, you know, that closed architecture really makes sense. Racks basically just open stack, and I think we're all better off for it. I truly do. But it, you know, a, again, as we, as we go forward, we want to see these things shift to an open ecosystem, and I think we're there. And the reason for the, the universities, right, is we want to make sure that this happens in a sort of a, you know, a, a, a bipartisan way, if you will. We want to make sure that software vendors um, get the benefit of this and adopters get the benefit. Just like OpenStack, there's really three communities you serve uh, in, in open compute, right? We've got, we've got our, our end user adopters, we've got our manufacturers, right, and we've got our sort of our what we call the new ISVs, if you will, right? These new software vendors that interface with open compute and ultimately have customers of their own. And by having universities get involved, not only are we, another sort of, this is actually something Oracle did uh, in the 90s and early 2000s um, over in, uh, I want to say it was Brazil, they spun up what they called Oracle U at the global level. And we want to do the same thing. So we're working with a number of different universities. Um, I don't know that I'm capable of saying which universities yet, you probably know, but um, there's more than one. So um, we're working, you know, I, I just had one of the most amazing conference calls of my life with the Haystack uh, team. Uh, anybody familiar with the MIT Haystack project? The, the, the Black Hole Telescope? We just talked to those guys and that was such an amazing, such an amazing conversation to have. These guys are collecting, um, I, I don't want to misquote, but I believe it was 64 gigs a second. 64 gigs a second, and they have roughly three or four campaigns a year. So imagine what that data looks like. That's unbelievable. So, so this is a this is a telescope. Um, this is a telescope made to basically track black holes and see the event horizon actually happen. So very cool project. So we've got you know we've been on the phone with with MIT. There's other universities involved. We are going to move forward with the certification path. And it's going to be in a, in a way where the community is going to benefit from having sort of, a, you know, an independent body uh, help us with that certification. And at the same time, offer a great learning experience for that, for that uh, individual. So, how to get involved. We've got a, a we actually, the, the OWE, OWA CLA that OpenStack uses. We have the, you can sign the, the, the open web uh, CLA. Um, I would encourage if you found a, a vertical earlier interesting, um, please get on there and contribute. You know, a lot of 
a lot of this right now is being led by uh, Facebook and sort of the core members of of uh, the OpenQ initiative, but we're slowly seeing that transform into into community. And I can't tell you how many hackathons, you know, and Silicon Valley open site meetups I've been to with Lloyd, but we're starting to see that with OpenQ. Um, so get on a mailing list and and offer up, you know, pizza and uh, Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> being recorded. Uh, all right, offer a beer. We got a beer conference next to us for crying out loud. Um, so you know, get get something together, get people together, and and this is your opportunity to be a hardware vendor. I mean, if there's a technology that you want to see introduced, instead of the tier ones telling us what they think is good for us, right? Let's tell them what we want, and that is our opportunity. I mean, it's a big opportunity. So just like the OpenStack initiative. We are now empowered to tell the world what makes sense for us, and we're able to uh, we're able to to basically change the world. So with that, I thank you, and I want to open up the floor. I wanted to save about ten minutes for questions because I think this is forty minutes, and I think we're right at thirty. So, questions. Let me get back to you on that because there's, there's, we do have a lot of, well, we can talk offline. Um, we do have a lot of those same companies that are participating in that venue, participating here. So you'll see, you know, the Fusion IOs of the world and and others um, that are that are interested. So I'd love to, I'd love to meet with you after the fact and sort of talk you through. So yeah. So the U.S. about the MDME, right? that, right? In fact, we don't have anybody currently leading that initiative. Uh, if, if you think about Facebook's big growth, right, um, Lady Gaga takes a picture of her knee, and it's the, it's the biggest thing for a week, right, and then nobody sees it again. For, so cold storage is very important to OpenQ right now and Facebook, but we do have a number of vendors, and in fact, in the storage spec, uh, you know, the, the one approved spec right now inside of Open Compute. Is a, is, a, is, a, is a spec called Nox, and Nox is just JBot. Just it's, it's very dense JBot, right? It's two, it's two U, and there's two sleds, and you can because of the 21 inches, you can fit 15 drives in each of these sleds. So you get 30 as dense as you want drives inside of two U, and you can think about 42 U. It's a lot of disk, but that's sort of the core focus of that cold storage. But we do understand, right? We're, we're not we're not um, uh, negligent in terms of understanding the need for um, even hybrid spec, where you know, sh sure, uh, an external SAS cable plugged into up the compute, you know, works. But we're working with a number of companies in terms of offering sort of hybrid spec, where you've got you know maybe a very uh, dense multi-core environment on one sled, and then 15 drives below uh, of of you know tiered storage. So certainly, hierarchical storage management is is important to open compute and going through what that looks like. Um, flash and you know, solid state, high performance, low latency has not been something that we've typically been focusing on yet. But there's opportunity um, if you go and you, you if you go to opencompute.org uh, at the very top, there's a get involved link, and under get involved, you can go down to the GitHub. All of our specs are out in GitHub, and you can see, and you can actually contribute on the mailing list. You say, hey, I've got this idea for a you know for a, um, a low latency high performance uh, box and and the beauty of this is you know uh, long term this could very much look like a groupon where you could source this and, and it, the spec takes off and then it becomes a standard and gets voted in and that becomes an actual open compute spec which is fantastic so I would like to talk to you about that offline though just just because there's there's some action you know uh, w w we are definitely involved in some of those conversations but it's just not been a core focus yet 
Sure. I think what's changed is, oh, sorry, sorry. So the, his question was, from the 90s, there, there were interested parties, and there was actually an initiative to sort of do this uh, similar thing, uh, and, and what's changed since the 90s to allow for this? And I think the answer is, is pretty simple. We now have, uh, globally, right, uh, I would imagine that at least 50% of this room has, has operations in, in at least two data centers. Am I right? Any show of hands? More than more than one data center, sure, right? So we are we have reached sort of this scale out point where it doesn't make sense to to have sort of the the scale up fault tolerant uh, deployments, and we want to make sure you know I think I think open source initially was was met with some criticism in the 90s, right? It happened to Sun, it happened, I mean look what happened to Linux, right? I mean Linux was it, it's 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 it, you know it's crazy when you look back and think about the hurdles that Linux had to overcome to penetrate the data center. And OpenStack is going through that right now as well. But I think that the workloads are ultimately what de determine the, the ability for an initiative like this to take off. And this is why we're so interested in differentiated specs, right? Facebook realized that, that just cold storage doesn't make sense for them. Just offering, just offering you know, JBOD, uh, that's, that's, you know, is that going to help, is that gonna help the, the OpenStack uh, initiative? Uh, you know, some, for some scenarios, it would, right? But this is why we wanted to open it up because Facebook realized that this wasn't just about them. This is about everybody else, and they do understand with you know with Hadoop and with OpenStack and just the the nature of scale out computing today. I think people are looking again for uh, an open ecosystem to, con to contribute through, and I think you know by by design or by chance, Facebook happened to be in the right place to to start those conversations with all of the appropriate vendors and all of the appropriate you know, um, tier one partners. So I think two things have changed, right? Number one, people are more uh, friendly to open source. Number two, I think the workloads, the scale, the nature of the scale out workloads in this ecosystem lend themselves nicer to, to something like this than sort of a, you know, a, a locked in. People don't want lock in. People used to want lock in, right? People, you know, Oracle still does a great job at saying, it's us for Linux, it's us for the hardware, it's us for you know whatever, one phone number, right? That's what they've operated under for a while now, and it's still successful. But the bottom line is, you know, open source software has, there's a comfort level associated with open source software now, and I think that that's actually a, a big game changer in terms of being able to adopt something like this. Any other questions? Great, with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cole. I would say uh, either during the conference or after the conference uh, by email, get a hold of Cole. Uh, when I met him about a year ago, I he really impressed upon me right away how he's great at uh, connecting people with, with answers. And if he doesn't know it, he'll, f he'll find the right person. So either about open compute or open stack, he has a wealth of knowledge about both. So thanks so very much, Cole. Thank you.